I'm a huge fan of uh, Tokyo Ghoul. As such, I have been watching Tokyo Ghoul season 30, um, which is actually following the manga, which is actually following the manga of Tokyo Ghoul. Um, free. Um, if you didn't know, Tokyo Ghoul Route A actually is based off of um, what Su Ishida published in a magazine during the early production of Tokyo Ghoul, or I think before he published, started publishing Tokyo Ghoul Route A. And you can find out more about that on Channel Federator. They did like 170, 107 things that you didn't know about Tokyo Ghoul. And they uh, brought that up, which is how I know that. Not a lot of people don't like Tokyo Ghoul Bure because it doesn't follow the manga. But I still feel like it w was pretty decent. Like I am reading the manga. I actually have up to volume 14, I think. I don't have all of them with me, um, however, I still like both the manga and the anime. Um, it's just, I think they're both in their own ways. Because the thing that, and this is going to get into my thoughts on Tokyo Ghoul um, Re, what got me into Tokyo Ghoul was that it had a lot of focus on the psychological effects that all these events were having on the main character of Kaneki. Like, he goes through so much torture, figuratively and literally, <laughs> um, figuring out how to live his life as a past ghoul. And then, uh, in Route A, um, D.R. Arakata, when he did his review of Tokyo Ghoul, said that you know, it was kind of like him trying to um, accomplish a goal, but then it doesn't um, end up working, or you can go watch the video, I'll link it below. Um, he said it better, but it was, you know, kind of like he was trying to accomplish this goal by joining the people who hurt him and hurt the people that he, he cared about by trying to keep them away from the people that he loved. Um, kind of like how Ayato, if you didn't know, spoilers, Ayato joined Algeri Tree in order to protect Toka. It was kind of on that same level. But then he goes on to say that, you know, but it doesn't work in the end, so what was the point? Well, true, but also in Route A and, well, also in the manga, it doesn't work because he ends up losing his, losing his memory and becoming a ghoul investigator. So it didn't work in the anime, it didn't work in the manga. So there's, yeah, either way you go, it's kind of like an alternate route. <laughs> alternate route A. Oh, uh, that's funny. So it... Even Route A, in my opinion, focused a lot on the characters and on the psychological aspects that um, Kaneki was dealing with. Like, the torture that Jason brought him through. Like, if you've watched the scene where they're trying to break prisoners out of um, the CCG, and then he goes crazy and, like, this giant centipede comes out and he's like literally like going crazy and like he can't even drink a cup of coffee because he's so traumatized like those are the good points of Tokyo Ghoul going into Tokyo Ghoul 3 season 3 uh, it is following more of the manga but it also is leaving a lot of parts out I haven't gotten to read yet as I said I'm only on volume 14 um, However, TV reviews. He has been doing reviews on season three of Tokyo Ghoul. Um, obviously, he is actually the person who actually got me into Tokyo Ghoul. Um, this is 
I love his reviews and he's always talking about Tokyo Ghoul and I'm like, what is it? What is it about? It's a psychological horror anime. Uh, kinda, my, my tastes kinda go from romance to psychological to slice of life. Um, that being said, uh, season three didn't start off that great. I didn't like it at first. Um, but he just left a lot of stuff out and it really showed. Um, and he was saying that it's not for anime only, it's more for manga readers. But even still, it's cutting out like huge chunks of um, the manga. Uh, which you would only catch if you're reading the manga. But as an anime only, you still catch that things are missing um, because nothing makes sense. <laughs> um, I mean, even if you were a manga reader, um, it really doesn't make sense that they would cut out what they did. Mitsubi? Is her name Mitsubi? I don't know. The green hair girl. The girl with the green and black hair. She's actually a girl. But they neglected to point that out. Um, when Torso attacked her, they left out this huge scene where it was revealed that he um, went after her for, like, she has scars all over her body. Um, and that's why he, when it come, came to the auction, he was like, oh my god, I have to go, you know, capture her again and she's mine and all this other stuff. As an anime only, that scene didn't make sense. I'm like, but why is he going after her? Then he tried to get away from her because of the CCG came after her again. And then I watched the TV's review of that episode and I'm like, oh, now it makes sense why he went after her because it doesn't make sense because they cut that scene out of anime. So things like that. Um, episodes six and seven were the best episodes of the season, but episodes six and seven were better because they didn't cut out as much of the gory details. Like, I think it was in episode six, you saw Eerie going like almost crazy, like Kaneki. And he actually looked like Kaneki just with a different Kagane. <laughs>
you're embarrassing. It's been quite a while since I've been scratched. Let's have a taste. are getting their heads chopped off and we don't get to see it we don't get to see um one of the characters he's like eating somebody's head like it's a like it's a pineapple and we don't get to see that like it's done off screen but we see the effect that it's having on some of the characters which doesn't make any sense like oh yeah they cut out a lot of flashbacks and uh story um to tell who the characters are which are necessary in order to, like, even in the manga, like, TV Reviews was saying that they cut out a lot of flashbacks and everything, a lot of reveals, a lot of the character interactions, which is what made season one and two so great. And then they're not having that in season three, even though they're following more of the manga and they're cutting out those scenes from the manga. <laughs> Overall, if um, the rest of the season goes on, like, um, episode six and seven then i think we'll be okay if they like keep going on like that and expanding upon it and doing uh more stuff like that um if they kept it flex of life i would still be okay with that i like size of life obviously obviously however if they divulge back into the same thing that they were doing in episodes one through five then it's going to be kind of bland, boring, um, and we aren't really going to get a feel for the characters, which is disappointing because the characters are what make the show not be actually. Let's talk about episodes, I don't know, a little bit. So there were so many, like, reveals, or not really reveals, but, like, reveals into Heat Heisei's inner psyche. So, um, we see one of the characters who is a dove talking to Heisei and as he's walking away he like he has the silhouette of Jason and he cracks his knuckles. Like the, the famous knuckle cracking scene that Kaneki got from Jason. And um, that was to showcase that um, I don't remember if this was brought up in the anime but it's definitely in the manga so I remember it clearly um, Jason was actually taken in by the CCG and tortured by one of the doves and that's where he got the Nogokuraki however I thought that um, the dove who did that to him was killed but no he's still alive but <laughs> Jason really messed up his face um, and he's also the one who accused Juzo of killing animals. Um, the scene in season two where we get Ju Juzo's flashback. There was a rumor going around that he was killing cats and then they saw him like killing a bunch of ants and they kind of like put two and two together and like believed that rumor. But Juzo wasn't the one doing it, it was the guy who tortured Jason. <laughs> Um, go figure. And as soon as I saw Jason's silhouette and I saw the guy crack his knuckles, I was like, Oh, that's the guy who tortured Jason. Damn. Uh, that was one of the best scenes. And then we see Heisei walking down the street and he passes by where um, Anteku used to be. And he sees uh, like a memory or a flashback or something. But then he looks and he doesn't see a building anymore, he just sees an empty lot. And he's like, what is this place? Because <laughs> he doesn't remember, because he's Heisei and not Kaneki and he's trying to push Kaneki away. It's really sad and I really want Kaneki back. <laughs> um, 
I would really appreciate more to cook up. That's the other thing. I don't like the opening and the ending sequences, nor do I like the animation. As I said, I'm not a fan of the Cogne animation, but even like the character designs look so different, and I'm not a fan of it. Um, say what you will about Tokyo Ghoul Season 1 and 2, but at least the animation at least mimicked or resembled the animation in the manga. Like, it looked like the same characters. And this, it looks weird. Um, that's just my opinion in episode 6. They dropped Unravel. Like, they started playing Unravel during one of the fight scenes. And that was such a throwback. And I love Unravel. It's my favorite of all of the opening. That's it. I'm going to try to do um, more episodic reviews of Tokyo Ghoul and I might even do reviews of the other anime that I'm watching but none of them are really that great except for Car Captor Sakura um, which I'm watching clear part. Um, I'll just try and do episodic reviews of Tokyo Ghoul season 3 and that way you guys can keep updated on my thoughts on that and they're not as jumbly and rambly as this 